Studios Original. Welcome to Web Crawlers. This is one of our mini episodes. This is a shorter episode than our main episode where we talk about all things weird, unusual news stories, read listener emails, and play our voicemails to get to gay. To gay. To <laughs> gay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, my speech impediment came out. I had actually speech therapy growing up because I said, wood off the wed, wood off the wed nose, Wayne Dia. I had oh. to go. Oh, I said no R's. So I'd say ka. Oh, really? let's go into ka. But yeah, I was I like, never... whittle, whittle wed dwes. You guys from um, Boston? <laughs> my parents actually are. Um, oh, that explains uh, it. So anyways, as I was, as I was saying, uh, we have a very special guest today. Melissa, who do we have? We have... The most needed guest, yes. <laughs> according to Maria, in podcast history, Mr. Paul F. Pod- Tompkins. <laughs> in podcast history now. He's not well? wanted, he's needed. <laughs> needed. needed. <laughs> Web crawlers, thank you, for, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm a big fan of the show. I listen, I listen every day now. Wow. Oh, my god. You serious, Paul? Yeah, Maria, I'm serious. Okay. All right, I I, I I choose to believe you, but I, I don't listen to this every day. Well, you have chosen wisely. <laughs> Interesting. I listen to the big ones every day. Hmm. I, I listen to the big ones every day, doing? too. How do you guys have this? T- I, I, I... In the morning, I wake up, I make my tea, I listen to my podcasts, and then I get on wow. with my day. That's what I do. <laughs> then I get on with my day. <laughs> it's like soap opera. <laughs> get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, get I out go of through way. the drudgery of listening to my podcasts, and then I can live my life. Yeah, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Maria's I, actually never listened to this podcast. Ellie. I've listened. <laughs> Well, we've got Mr. Paul F. Tompkins here. He's on he's on every podcast. You got you have Freedom is your own podcast. You're That's part right, of Super Freedom, Ego. Super Ego, the neighborhood listen. You're Mr. Podcast. Peanut Butter on I'm Mr. Bojack Peanut Horseman. Butter, not a podcast project, but a no. related <laughs> thing nonetheless. I have a podcast with my wife now during quarantine called Stay F. Homekins. I listen to Stay F. Homekins. It's very Thank funny. Thank you. It's Thank Janie you saying crazy things and Paul's going, Janie. <laughs> <sighs> that's the podcast. No, that's not what I do. Don't make it sound like that. <laughs> that's my dream relationship. My stupid wife. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So today we're talking about <laughs> urban legends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway so we're talking about urban legends you know like the hook the hitchhiker the um little mikey dying from pop rock there's someone in the back seat uh what did craig craig just famously resurrection told us mary resurrection, resurrection the mary scariest tale of them all bloody mary oh bloody mary oh oh there's also um i'm gonna pronounce this so wrong uh-oh there was just a movie about it starring Linda Cardellini. Scooby Doo. La La Llorona. Huh? What? <laughs> this the weeping. The La Llorona. Sí. La... Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. So urban legends of all types, and like for example, internet urban legends like Slenderman. Ooh. There's I also my Man. favorite, my <laughs> favorite urban legend. The snake. <clears throat> Favorite? Whoa. No, not the snake. That actually happened to Amanda's cousin. No, but it what? didn't. What's the snake? No, the measuring thing. The That's a man. That actually happened to Amanda's cousin. No, no it, it didn't. Did yes, it did. <laughs> no, it did. No, it did not. Allie, what happened? Allie, what happened? <laughs> Have you heard the one about there's um there's uh, a spider spiders spider grow, eggs spider. in your face. <laughs> That actually did happen to someone I know. <laughs> no, it yeah, did. So did friend. the snake. Yes. Amanda's cousin had a pet. <laughs> the snake did not happen. A boa constrictor. And he <sighs> she, she, he would let it sleep in the bed with him. And then. Oh, no. Did it eat a baby? Well, no. no. So what happened was it was getting larger and larger every night. And, the, and her cousin was like, what's going on here this is really weird it's getting larger every this i've yes. never heard this aspect before. yes it's getting larger that, that, and larger the snake yes the stink was stretching and no. so then he called the snake no. vet. yes in long beach he called the snake vet yes he did and then the snake vet said 
get out of the house immediately. Get out of the house immediately. And then her cousin said, why? And he said, he's measuring you. Oh, no. No. That's on Snopes as proven false. Yeah. Here's, <laughs> that here's a big cousin. It did not. It did not. Here's, here's a big issue with that story. It's like. How does the snake know that it's measuring the person? So is the snake like laying down next to the person? Yeah. And then like ra- raising its little snake head and saying, well, I'm almost there. Also, yeah. I never heard the detail that the snake could magically grow its own body. That's a weird Well, detail. I'm going to have to ask that, Amanda. I'm going to have to not, ask Amanda then. You should ask Amanda. Yeah. yeah, we should get Amanda on the horn. Because snakes, they eat their prey by squeezing them. They yeah. attack and they squeeze. Yeah, they hug. Yeah, it's a, a python surprise will, attack. Yeah, a python crushes. A python <laughs> crushes, and then a boa constrictor, I guess, is the one that swallows it whole and oh, yeah. constricts as it goes on. I think. I think. Yeah. But either way, they're not. They're not like. <laughs> They, they they don't grow to the size of their food. Well, I yeah, no. I guess if you guys don't want to believe it, whatever. <laughs> but this this is something that happened in the Lund family, and I think it's honestly a little bit traumatic. But whatever, no no no, you guys do whatever you're gonna do. Okay. So wait, so then so Amanda's cousin did run out of the house. Ran out of the house. Yeah, and, and never went, went back. Like went to the where to the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> I think right to the realty office and said to I, buy a new house with new yeah, yeah yeah smart. Yes. Smart. Just burned her house down with a snake in it. <laughs> That's all you can do. <laughs> you guys are ignorant. Kind of you guys are ignorant. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair okay. Enough. So there's the classic urban legend about the flashing headlights. You guys know this one? Yes. So yeah. the legend of everything. the gang members, they were to be initiated into the gang, they drive around without their headlights on and then they wait for someone to flash their headlights. And when they do, they follow them and they murder whoever flashed the headlights first. It's like a game they play. Yeah, and then you're in the Like game. a grease type, something that they might do in Greece. <laughs> yes. It's yes. just like Greece. Greece <laughs> exactly lightning. like Greece. Mm-hmm. So this rumor became popular in the 90s via fax and email. The facts. Facts. More facts. <laughs> hey, what's like, what's your weird. facts number? I would have sent you a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I would have sent you some flimsy <laughs> bullshit on some flimsy paper. I definitely want you. I definitely want you to expend ink on this. Yes. Ink and toner. It's important. Which are probably like a thousand dollars back then. <laughs> yeah, it's a thousand dollars to send you this urban legend. So the origin. It may have begun in 1993 when this woman, Kelly Freed, was shot and killed in Stockton. She was riding in the passenger seat when a driver... Of her best friend's ride? (laughs) Yes. Aww. She was yelling at... There were some scrubs. (laughs) And she was like, no, (laughs) you can't have a ride. (laughs) But she signaled, or whoever's driving flashed a car, and they took the flashing lights as an insult. And they drove back and they shot her. It is insulting. Oof. It is. Well, yeah. A, fla- a, a, a flash of the headlight is a very passive aggressive maneuver because it's but either I going like. I mean, it's li- friendly. I do it. It's helpful. Yes, it's helpful. I do it whenever I'm mad and don't want to get into a conversation. I tell whoever I'm mad at to come outside. I get in my car and I flash my headlights a couple times. And then. That's a different interpretation. I Maria. Think. Then they know that I'm mad, that I'm mad. Well, I guess we know what to look out for. In Maria's driveway. <laughs> if you know that there's a cop, like, do if there's a cop and they're giving out speeding tickets, don't you flash your lights at people coming the opposite yes. way just to warn them? That's a thing people I used to do that back in the in the boonies in Michigan. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it I think it's a good Samaritan thing to do to I flash your lights. I don't know how to people. flash my lights, to be honest. You pull it the, the thing back. You pull the thing you back. You need I don't to think get so. your license taken away. Really? Okay. You'll have to pry yeah. it from my cold, dead hands. My right. license. Stop flirting. Stop <laughs> flirting with me again. I'm, you're in a relationship. That's unique to, I think, places like California where there's not a lot of fog. And yeah. um, oh, so right. you, you just, you hardly ever use your high beams. You, right. you use them on the back roads. 
we feel like I feel like there's a potential for this urban legend to become true because of people that are like, it's my freedom to not have my lights on. Uh, and yeah. it's the same people that would have guns in their cars that would shoot you for insulting them, for trying to control them. Yeah, 100 percent. That's uh-huh. my theory, guys. You're giving Maria ideas right now. No, don't. <laughs> Nothing wrong with an idea. Don't put on that roof rack, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> so another car related urban legend is the person in the back seat. Yes. Where the legend goes that a lady was at a gas station <laughs> filling up her tank and then she went to get back in her car when the station attendant called her into the store and he says, oh, there's trouble with your payment. You need to come back inside. And once inside, he tells her, oh, a man snuck into the back seat of your car. And she looks out and sees a man slipping out of the car. Oh. I've never heard it that way. I've always heard it that the yeah. it was too late that she oh. sees him in the she sees him in the rearview mirror. Well, this is the this is the good ending of the urban legends. Absolutely, this is just more <laughs> like to warn people in a in a more believable way to make it less like a ghost story. Do you when you get gas in your car? Do you guys lock your doors? Yeah. No, I do too. but I think I should. I do because of this urban legend. Well, have you seen the movie Urban Legends? Ye- oh yeah, like this happens a different a different way. How did it happen so, in the movie? <laughs> okay, so the person's like your payment didn't work. She goes into the gas station and the gas station the the gas station guy like scares her because he's like, there's, there's someone in the back seat. And she's like, Oh my God, you're crazy. So then she goes back <laughs> into the car. She starts driving and then there is someone in the back seat, yeah. and she gets beheaded. Mm. Why would you, why would her reaction be? That's crazy. Was he a weirdo in the movie? Yeah, yeah he was a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah, yeah. he was like, there's someone in your back seat. She's like, what, That's- sir? And he's like, you better watch out. Like, he wasn't saying You stole saying my story. Like in secret you window. Sto- yeah. You stole my story. You stole yeah. my story. Your favorite <laughs> you stole my story. John Turturro. Is that from a high window? <laughs> secret window. You remember secret that? Secret window. Johnny Depp movie. Oh my God. Yes. I think I only ever saw the trailer. <laughs> you stole my story. You stole, you stole my, my story. You stole my story. It's fun <laughs> to say. It is good. This urban legend, it originated in the late 60s because it made it into an Ann Landers column wow. in 1962. Ah, Ann Landers. In 1982. Wow. Wow. Well, let me ask you about your, your gas buying uh habits because even at night for me i am just i'm there at the pump putting my own gas in the car Mm -hmm. like i do it i do it with a credit card so i never i'm never leaving the car but do you well i guess in michigan when it was freezing and snowing you put the pump in you can like put a little click up there so it holds it in and they use it back in the car well i do that so i can wash my windows you're not supposed to go back in the car while you're filling up well, why don't explode? you grow up in Kalamazoo and, and fill up your gas tank? You know what's crazy, negative? though? Ooh. <laughs> Melissa, you're going to have to go to Maria's driveway now. Oh, no, she's going <laughs> to flash her lights at me. <laughs> flick, flick. Uh, in Oregon, you can't pump your own gas. Oh, right. It's in illegal. In Jersey, too, yeah. Really? It's really why? It's crazy. When I drove, I took a road trip up to Oregon, and as soon as you get to Oregon, you are not allowed to pump your own gas. That's kind of nice, actually. It's ridiculous, I think. Do you have to do you tip the gas pump? Th- yeah. In? Yeah. I wanted to get my screwdriver too. Wait, Paul, I've what? got a screwdriver too. What? Maria. What? <laughs> Paul, did you see my screwdriver and that's why you got yours, or did you just what pick one it? up? No, I just happening. I just had my screwdriver. Is that true? I I pick up a screwdriver for every podcast I record. No, yes. Paul, did you see me picking up my screwdriver and then you Went for yours. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty rat. Why are you waving a screwdriver around? Because <laughs> I don't have any headlights. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fucking got me. But wait, wait, wait. So do you all, here in Los Angeles, do you all lock your cars when you get out to pump your gas? I do, yes. Yeah. I do instinctively, I do. I feel like because I'm a woman, maybe. No, of course, but but you don't leave the area of your car, do you? No, no, no. no. I usually get back into my car because I also heard about people who 
will steal like purses out of cars and like wallets. Yeah. Oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know? I don't lock it because of this urban legend. Like, I'm not afraid of someone getting in the back seat, okay. but well, I do. Okay. That yeah. would be scary, <laughs> though. No one's mm-hmm. accusing you of anything. Yeah. I just get furious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, yeah, it came from an Ann Landers column in 1982. But like the closest thing to like a real origin story was in 1964, a murder suspect hid in the back of the car which ended up belonging to a police detective, and the man was shot by the detective. That so, sounds fake, uh, too. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, just my luck. But there's also <laughs> other iterations of this about when there's someone in the back seat and then the truck behind keeps flashing lights yes, every I've time the guy one. pops yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time the guy pops up. So that oh, combines the, the flashing headlights and this. <laughs> It's like two urban legends in one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why would the car in back know that the guy in the back seat wasn't supposed to be there? Good Good point. Because he's because he's like slowly lifting, he has like a knife. He's like slowly reaching up with (laughs) the knife. (laughs) Why doesn't he do it? Why does he keep second guessing himself? (laughs) Because the truck keeps stopping him. The truck is flashing the lights and the woman keeps looking. (laughs) The guy's measuring you. <laughs> oh my god. So then this one's crazy. I hate um, this one so I much. I haven't heard of this one. You haven't? Uh, no. The title is Dog Licking <gasps> Kids. This is my hand favorite one. In bed. This is my oh, favorite really? one. Really? Yes, okay, and this actually happened it. to my best friend. No, it did. Oh, yes, it did. wait. I know this um, one. Yes, this it did, did not know. Maria. It Maria. did. <laughs> My best friend Susan. Yes, it did in grade no, school. Susan. Susan. Okay. What's Susan's parents, last name? What Susan's last name? Anthony La Jolla. <laughs> B. No, Anthony. Susan La Jolla, and you can look her up Anthony. on Facebook or whatever. Susan La Jolla. Susan La Jolla. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she knows Lydia de Alva. It was my <laughs> my friend Carmen San Diego. <laughs> You guys are sound so ignorant right now because she's been in therapy for years because of this. Her parents went out of town for the night and she was like, we were like... They went out of town for the night? Yes. (laughs) That's like so 80s. No, we... Where did they go? so 80s. They had to go down to San Diego, ironically... (laughs) To see Carmen, to see their other daughter, Carmen. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so Maria. they had to go out of town for the night and they said they said do you need a babysitter and we were like 11 or 12 and and she was like no i'll be fine we live in the palisade it's like it's totally safe and so and they were like you've got rudolph the dog it was this cute golden retriever rudolph <laughs> rudolph, rudolph what it's a good name yeah i know he was so cute so then like during the night I guess Susan would get like kind of scared. And so she would on her. She was like sitting in bed and whenever she'd get scared, she'd go, Rudolph, give me a, give me a little lick on the hand so, to let her know that like that, like he was there protecting her, you know. And so she was doing that all throughout the night. And then at what point she went, Rudolph, give me give me a lick. And he licked it. And then she said, well, I got to go downstairs and, and get a glass of water. And so she walked downstairs to get a glass of water. Rudolph was dead. <laughs> <laughs> turns out an escaped murderer was hiding out under her bed licking her hand wow that sounds real it and was she, real and Susan what left after that Susan Susan left school after that <laughs> How, so the murderer just like he just stayed under the bed he didn't murder her well, what does your urban legend say happened at the end? I'd love to know. I'm so I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> well, what happened to this other person that this happened to? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this common thing that happens all the time. So, uh, a girl is home sleeping in bed with her dog. She hears a dripping sound in the middle of the night and gets up to investigate. Finding nothing, she lays back down and her dog licks her hand as she falls back asleep. This happens again and again and she finds nothing. Finally, she gets up and goes into the bathroom where she is greeted by a horrific sight. Her beloved dog with its throat slit is hanging from the shower. It's blood 
no, this that's is what Susan's happened, story. Yeah, I left that part out. This but is, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's blood drip, drip, dripping from the ground. Horrified, she looks at the mirror where written in her dog's blood are the words, humans can lick too. What? That's right. I forgot. I can. Un- you forgot yeah, that part, Maria, that very important detail of writing and blood on the mirror. <laughs> yeah. This, this is disgusting. Really, that's for, right. You know, <laughs> We're ignorant. I get it. This urban legend can be traced back to a diary entry from 1871 England penned by a man named Derma Birchall. Birchall recalls hearing a tale at a party of a woman who roused her husband (laughs) in the middle of the night saying she felt like there was a robber under the bed and implored him to (laughs) investigate. The man replied that it was just their dog. He had felt him lick his hand. The next morning, all the jewels had been stolen. All the jewels were stolen. This is insane. (laughs) The story had spread far and wide and was featured in an episode of The L Word. Oh. That's (laughs) right. End end of the tale. Congrats, (laughs) urban legend. Yeah. (laughs) That's like the (laughs) Emmys for urban legends. One variation I heard was that it was an escaped mental patient from like a psychiatric hospital was just licking the hand. And you know that I don't sleep with my arms hanging off the bed or my limbs hanging off the bed because of this urban legend. Wow, wow. Well, that's just a gross feeling. It's scary. I can't have my hand hanging out. I'm afraid that like something's gonna come from under my bed, even though I don't have an underneath my bed. (laughs) (laughs) Melissa, what about... What about, um, do you ever stick your foot out to regulate your temperature? At night? Yes, but I don't hang it over the mattress. It has to stay I see. on the bed. Okay. All right. She so like I- lifted up? Yes. <laughs> Straight up in the air. Yeah. Straight up in the air. Get the blood flowing back to. <laughs> um, the next one is the snake, but we we already talked about snake measuring. So Debunked. Melissa. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> debunked. Be- and Amanda's going to come on and tell you guys about it. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. Oh, good. We can can loop that in. Um, Melissa, should we go to the hook? Ooh, the hook. Oh, Amanda's in the waiting room, Melissa. Oh, my God. She's here? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're having a rage. I I gotta go, you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, connected. Hello. Hey. Wow. Look at that bikini. I know. (laughs) Sorry. Look out, boys. Amanda, they don't believe (laughs) I've been trying to tell them about your cousin and the boa constrictor, and they're saying, oh, you're making fun. This is all a joke. Have you told them the story? Well, I I, I told them, and they made fun of me. We did. Well, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't tell it, right? Okay, go ahead. Well, let's hear it. But Paul and Melissa, haven't you heard this before? I have. It's like a. It's on Snopes. Mm-mm. Well, maybe my it's cousin. On my cousin must have put it on Snopes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not on Snopes. This happened to your cousin. cousin I think it's really my cousin Robbie had the, a boa constrictor. They were very close. They slept in the bed together, and one. What? They were very very close, and the boa constrictor had like free reign over the house, and so it would sleep in the bed with Robbie, and then one. In the middle of the night, Robbie woke up and he looked and the boa constrictor was just like straight, like straight, like a board. So he thought he was dead. And so he called the vet. He called the emergency vet line. And the vet said, he told the vet the symptoms and the vet said, get out symptoms now. And then <laughs> Robbie goes, why? And the vet said, he's not dead. He's measuring you. No. Yes. <laughs> Who did your your cousin told this to you? Yeah. And then when did he tell this to you? Years ago. Have you ever seen a picture of the snake? Um. Yeah. <laughs> how old, sure how old were you? How old were you when he told you the story? And how old was he? We were both eleven. Okay. okay. That's like when Susan had her uh, urban, my friend, my be- I mean, my best friend Susan La Jolla in grade school. Remember when I told you that she was she was her parents went out of town and then her her dog was night. licking her hand. Remember? And horrible. Then, remember and then that was that horrible? Yeah. 
But did you guys hear, hear about the one about the um, oh, my friend who married a woman, but they were both religious, so they never slept in the same bed together, and she would always wear a choker. <laughs> <That's> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know my? I That's think it's true. my my cousin's friend had this portrait of himself hanging in his house that, <laughs> and it was like the portrait fun. got older, but he never did. You guys are making oh, that's fun. A good one. What happened to Amanda's friend, religious friends, is actually really st- scary because what happened was when they r- removed the ribbon, uh, the woman's head fell off. <laughs> no, you're you're serious. It rolls right off. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Was that on the news? <laughs> I don't know. It was in 1997, so you have to go through the art the archives. Uh, what's this episode on? Cousins. <laughs> cousins are cousins. Uh, stories. Are cousins? Cousins, tell. cousins and their stories. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cousins. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. <laughs> True. So, Rob, Robbie, did he, did they get rid of the snake or what did they do? Well, he had to, he had to rehome it. Right. Well, so it went to someone I else's home a, and it ate them. Yeah, I bet that was an awkward conversation. <laughs> Probably went to go live hey, on you the look, farm. You look pretty tall. Do you want a snake that's shorter than you? <laughs> you better hope it starts from the feet. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, if it starts in the head, it doesn't matter how tall you are. Well, thanks, Amanda. This okay. I think this is good because it 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 gave a little bit of humanity yeah. to the story. That's good. Yeah, it did put a face on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks, Amanda. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Well. The wow. proof is See? in the pudding. There we go. There we go. So From one eleven-year-old to another. Yeah. <laughs> this story holds water all these years. Later. So the hook. The hook is about these two people are making out in a car, and on Lovers Lane, and they're listening to the radio, doing some <gasps> necking. Oh yes. Damn. And then the music was interrupted by this radio announcer who's like, he's like, wow, well, there was an escaped convict <laughs> uh, in the area. Just uh, be careful. He's got a hook for a hand. So watch out. <laughs> and so the couple became frightened and they drove away. And when the boy took the girl home, he went around to open the car door and there was a hook on the door handle. Oh, my Wait, God. But well, didn't they hear the hook go into? I thought there was like a scratching noise. Oh, that's, that's in one a, I feel iteration like of it. That's a, yeah, right? Is that also the hook? But it, it, then she goes out. She gets out of the car. He goes out to look to make sure everything's yeah, safe. Yeah, right. Then there's a scratching on the roof. And then she gets out of the car and she sees uh, he's hanging from a tree over the car. And it's his feet scraping on the Oh, car. right. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's better than this one. <laughs> That's this what is- happens in the movie Urban Legend. Really? Oh. And it happened to my old neighbor. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Axel Rose. My old, my old neighbor. Allie's old neighbor, <laughs> Axel Rose. <laughs> my old neighbor, Axel Rose. <laughs> Which we have to do another episode on because we got a weird email. We'll talk we about it next week about <laughs> some weird stuff about Axel Rose. So some people think this hook story is just like a cautionary tale about teenage sexuality. Like mm. if the girl hadn't said no to the boy then they'd both be dead right so it's like say no to the boy otherwise you're gonna get killed with a man with a hook that's a good psa (laughs) it is a a psa and then have you guys heard the paul is dead yes rumor yes (laughs) apparently ringo Starr admitted that paul mccartney died in a car crash in the 60s and he was replaced by a lookalike he admit he admit (laughs) Admitted it. <laughs> he did not admit that. <laughs> he that's, just the, that's the legend. He let it slip. He let it slip. <laughs> he did not the conversation. That. Like, oh he no, the one thing it. I'm not supposed to tell anyone. There was hidden messages in the albums. And oh. if you look at the cover of Abbey Road, you'll see the four guys. Paul is not wearing shoes. That's right. And his um, right foot is forward instead of his left foot. If if memory serves, in that Abbey Road picture, uh, they are trying to send the signal that Paul is dead because Paul is not wearing shoes. 
George is dressed in like working clothes, like uh, the the grave digger. John um, is wearing white, like the preacher, and mm. Ringo is wearing black, like the Undertaker. And then well, there's there a, it is. There's a license plate on a VW Bug that's in the picture. That's it's something like if sixty nine or something like he. It's like he would have been this age if. <laughs> it's <so> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> wow, that's a stretch. But this is the this is the kind of stuff that I like about conspiracy theories is when people are finding these things that will support their story, but it's all, yeah. it's all based on nothing, but it's fun. Yes. You know, like I really enjoyed the, however, I will say, did you guys see room? What is it? Fucking the one about, uh, room. the shining. Oh, Oh <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, um, yeah. It's yeah. Horrible room that 237 they were or room something. 232 or two, yeah, three, whatever yeah. it is. I, I thought that movie was was just about the the moon landing conspiracy. Right. And how The Shining was exposing that, you know, Kubrick directed the moon landing and, and all this. But then I what I did not realize was that it was just an uninterrupted string of conspiracy theories given in voiceover. Yeah. And oh, I, I I've lasted never seen about it. it. Oh, well, I mean, good luck to you. I lasted a half <laughs> I hour. tapped out too. Yeah, yeah, I tapped out. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take yeah. it because it was Whoa. just one like one theory is kind of fun to explore, but just a million billion theories is just too much. It was overwhelming for me. One yeah, theory is nice. Two theories cool. Three theories is a crowd. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But apparently, there's Any a clip at the end of waste. The, at the end of Strawberry Fields, where John says cranberry sauce. He's right. apparently saying I'm very bored, but people think he's saying I buried Paul. <laughs> Oh. Why would they bury Paul with no shoes, though? Why would you say I'm very bored on a recording? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maria Fuck says you, it all dude. the time on these recordings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to say it. You just hear me uh, typing. You just hear I me typing and looking at the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then there's the Pop Rocks and Soda Killed Little Mikey. Yes. Yeah. So this one, it... People don't really know where it originated, but most likely just somewhere from the Midwest in like the 19, late 70s. And the sales, what's even crazier is that the sales of Pop Rocks like went down. They had to take out ads saying that they did not, oh God, really? that they were what? dangerous. Oh my God. And they tried to get Mikey to be in a commercial for Pop Rocks, but he had a contract with Life Cereal. And his parents were like, we don't want to get him in the middle of all this. Wait, so the conspiracy was that Mikey from Life Serial? Yes. The, died, the Mikey, but then Mikey likes it. Yeah, but then Mikey... He died from eating Pop Rocks and soda. Yeah. Okay. So this Pop Rocks <laughs> company, they went bankrupt in 1982, and they, they lost millions of dollars. They had to bury like 300 million pouches of Pop Rocks. They buried it in a landfill. Why'd they bury it? Because they they didn't know what to do. No one was buying it. They had warehouses full of this stuff. Can can and you? What if you plastic, poured I mean, soda on yeah. the landfill? Like what? That's it what I was gonna say. <laughs> the volcano it was like Mount Vesuvius. Because Mythbusters yeah. did an episode on this, I think, where they tested out eating pop rocks and drinking soda, and like nothing happened. I did it. You Year, done it years later? Yes, years later. When I, I like remembered because they brought pop rocks back. Pop yeah, rocks they came did. Back. They did. Yeah. Um, and I remember trying it with friends and there was like, we were in our twenties and there was like a moment of, <laughs> you it, could die. Something going to happen. <laughs> like Russian roulette. <laughs> what I love about, what I love about this one is that it's not enough to just say, if you, if you mix pop rocks and soda, you will die. They also, for some reason, attached Mikey from white cereal. <laughs> like they could have, they could have picked know anybody. Movie is life with Mikey. Have you guys seen Life with Mikey with Michael J. Fox? No. no. Not, you not. guys, it's such a good movie. It's he plays like a Mikey type character who's now a uh, like an an agent, but he used to be a oh, child wait, actor. Oh wait, there's a little girl, Curly yeah. Sue? No, 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 but it's another little precocious <laughs> girl. Um yeah. and Played by Curly Sue? The girl no. from Waterworld. No. No, that's she was oh. an Andre. This is <laughs> oh, another girl. Do you mean Helen? <laughs> Who's Helen? <laughs> Who's Helen? Wasn't that, the name, wasn't that the name of the little girl in Waterworld? Or was oh, that yeah. was that what's her name? Jean Triple Horn's character. Somebody was named Helen and it made me 
laugh for some reason. Like <laughs> baby named Helen. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a great movie. If you guys haven't seen it, you should you should you should check it out. The tagline is "He's a talent agent, she's a thief." Looks like they've already got something in common. I have seen that movie. Oh. I remember it. I have seen that movie. It's a great tagline for like the Midwest. I bet they thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this one I've heard of: razor blades and Halloween candy. Yes. Oh yeah. Kids getting razor blades or needles and candy. This was big in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> the origin <laughs> is huge. The origin in 1959. A, oh, this is 59. Smart. Wow. Yeah. A California dentist, William Shine, gave, oh my God, candy coated laxative pills to trick or treaters. He was charged with outrage of public decency and unlawful dispensing of drugs. Outrage of public public decency. (laughs) So that's maybe where that originated. Why did he do that? Because he did. He wanted kids to have a bad association with candy. I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Vigilante dentistry. That's crazy. I mean, that's kind of a genius idea. (laughs) I mean, it's not a bad idea. Wild. But also, another thing that happened, the Tylenol murders happened right before Halloween in the 80s. What are the Tylenol murders? What are the Tylenol murders? I don't know what the Tylenol murders are. Oh, this is horrible. This is a truly horrible thing. We should probably do a whole Webcrawlers episode about this. You remember when people in the 80s started dying in Chicago because someone put cyanide in Tylenol pills and put it back on the shelf. What? It's a whole, it's a crazy story. It's like a whole. That that was like the beginning of child safety caps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah, we should definitely. How did I not know about? Well, I mean, there's a lot I don't know about. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So they're thinking like that doctor or the dentist and then. This kind of like drummed it up again because people are like, oh, people can tamper with like yeah. package stuff. Holy shit. When a doctor does a weird thing like that, it's the scariest thing it's, in the world. Yeah. It's terrifying. It's so terrifying. Like the doctor's doc- gone rogue. Doctor's gone rogue is so mm-hmm. scary to me. Oh, first do no harm. First do no harm. Mm. <laughs> Hippocratic oath. Come on. That's what, in um, Little Shop of Horrors, that's why Steve Martin scared me so much. Oh, yeah. Crazy like one of my doctors in movies. Crazy are dentist. S- oh, they're so creepy. Because there's something so sociopathic about wanting to like be a surgeon. And like if you have like one chromosome, like oh, it's crazy. Like Dr. Yeah. Death. Yes. That podcast. Yeah. Dr. Death, the guy, the guy that the fertility doctor that inseminated all those women with his own. Oh, semen. Yeah. So gross. It's crazy. Doctor, yeah. I can't, you can't trust doctors. <laughs> Cannot trust doctors. <laughs> Don't trust doctors. Okay, so this is a weird one. Melissa, I have never heard of this. Melissa wrote in this doc. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to differentiate what I write and what Melissa wrote. <laughs> Melissa wrote, Snapple was once owned by the KKK and then Osama <laughs> bin Laden. <laughs> and then Osama. <laughs> Wait, the- the clan sold Snapple to Osama bin Laden. Famously. Didn't that nice lady do all the Snapple commercials oh, too the in the Snapple 90s? Snapple lady. One rumor suggests a small letter K on Snapple labels stands for the KKK. <laughs> but the symbol means that Snapple, like Coca Cola and thousands of other products, meets kosher dietary standards. <laughs> yeah, there we are going box. to get emails for that one that we are saying kosher somehow has to do with the KKK. That's what people think. It's on it's on the internet. I've never heard that one. I know, I've never heard it either. It was a, I have just a either. random one. Melissa started it. Um, <laughs> then this one is needles in coin return slots of pay phones. I have heard of you that. heard of that. I one. feel like I've heard of that one. Yeah. 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 Oh, I've God. Yeah. Well, that happened as, as, after AIDS became uh, a thing. Mm hmm. Because people were like, oh, drug users are depositing their dirty needles into pay phones or like, drink machines you put your finger in there they just want to get high that's all they're not thinking like (laughs) and i'm also going to do a lethal prank (laughs) but there was the i remember the needle in the coke can remember that one no no No. do tell the needle in the the there was like don't drink coke for a little bit because there was a needle oh can hold on let's see 
reports 1993 reports of needles and soda cans climb reports <gasps> reports of cans of pepsi cola products containing syringes and hypodermic needles continue to be recorded yesterday what this what? Uh, I'm, I'm on no. snopes right now now they are saying it's false in the origins are in 1990 a clerk for a steinberg grocery store in eastern ontario discovered something in a pepsi bottle he f- at first mistook for a straw a closer examination revealed it was a syringe and the, the bottle was rescued from the shelf before it fell into the hands of a consumer okay so then that went into the 1993 pepsi syringe panic <laughs> so th- this was a whole thing wow but wait snopes said this did not happen <laughs> that didn't stop maria it sounds like it did i feel like that was in there somewhere pepsi, <laughs> yeah, she just pepsi, over well, it. i don't want to read the whole thing i just want you to come to your own conclusion <laughs> 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 though most finds involved syringes the list of items allegedly recovered from pepsi diet pepsi and caffeine free Diet Pepsi cans included a wood screw, a bullet, a crack vial, a broken sewing machine, and a mysterious blob of brown A broken, goo. Sewing, broken machine sewing machine in a can of Coke, Maria? Pepsi oh. and the Food Drug Administration. <laughs> That's what I heard soon. too, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> Half a car. Wow. <laughs> sewing machine for ants. They're saying an it was a hoax. boa constrictor. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying, they're saying it was a giant hoax. Once the first find was publicized, a number of unscrupulous people who sought to cash in on it created a rolling wave of growing hysteria. So they're saying all of these finds were phony. This is like the finger in the chili in the Wendy's chili. That's oh, right. Yes. Oh, yes. We talked about that on uh, what, what? We did. On our fast food. It was our fast food episode. The yeah. weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Yep. Oh, my God. You actually do listen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Who would say they listened if they didn't? They're just open yourself uh, up to, <laughs> a to lot being of caught out. So many times. <laughs> a lot of people. Do a lot of people tell you that they listen and they don't listen? I mean, I would imagine. No one tells. No one tells us that we listen. That they listen. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what is this crying baby thing? The most recent urban legend that I've heard that I actually saw this like on Instagram lately is the crying baby outside of your window. This is scary. Like, if you take note, take note, you guys, yeah. this is real. Oh, I think I do know this. So if you hear a crying baby outside your window, don't go and look. Wait, I have heard this. <laughs> because yes. you could be like a yes. serial killer. Yes, and somebody has a fucking recording of a yes. crying baby and they put it in. <laughs> this is no, no one's doing this. Yes, they are. That's there how was an, it happened houses. in um in Pennsylvania. <laughs> there was like an article about it. Moms circulate this in email right. chains, and they're like, "Tell your daughters because this is happening, and uh. they need to stay safe." Someone posted this on Instagram like recently that I follow that like I some kind of respect, and I was like, "What?" What did they post it as text? It was, was it one of those. Yes. Oh, I love when people do that. <laughs> it, whatever. <laughs> You can discount that immediately when you see yeah. people, somebody posting yeah. text of any kind. But there was a news story. Yeah, this Pittsburgh story. Okay, tell tell it. What is it? 2020, this year. People reported, like college kids, they said they reported to the police that they could hear crying babies outside of their windows. It was like on multiple different occasions. And then the 911 said, stay inside. And then the two college sorority sisters who lived on the south side say they feel safe living there. But not anymore. Uh, One college girl says, we've been staying together and not letting anyone be alone. This week, they say they heard what seemed like recordings of babies crying and someone shouting for help right outside their door. So for the listeners who don't know how this story ends, what happens when you hear the baby? (laughs) You open the door. It's because there's a little bassinet there or whatever with a blanket over it. And you go to look for the baby. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when you when you peel back like the the cloth Peeling or the blanket, back. you see it's a, mm-hmm. like a just a moving tape recorder, and it, you okay. hear the baby crying. And then as soon as you look up, a man grabs you by the neck and brings you into the house and murders you. All right. I mean that's a good yeah that's a good uh, good that's prank. good screenwriting. Yeah. So wait, and so. This is there any actual case of this having happened? 
Pittsburgh, mm. 2020. <sighs> well, but, people but no, heard but no. it. People heard it. Nobody got murdered. I don't believe. Thank God, so. Paul. You sick, <laughs> sick son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. So it could be that some. This was a prank, and then somebody filled on the filled in the blanks. Yes. Yeah. Do you wh- where you grew up, Paul? Were there any urban legends that like we didn't talk about today? You know, I was trying to think about that because I I I feel like they're they're so pervasive, and it's I knew a lot of the same ones. That you all knew, you know. Yeah. Uh, our local cryptid was the Jersey Devil. Oh, um, right. We love the Jersey Devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't remember. I was trying to think. Was there anything exclusive to? Uh, okay. <laughs> there was. There was a newscaster in Philadelphia who there was a rumor started about him that. It, it was just the Richard Gere gerbil rumor, oh. but then they oh. just also they, which which we also had like everyone knew that story. Yeah. yeah. But then they also just put it on this guy for for, <laughs> oh, for whatever no. reason. God. And it was it was it was everyone had heard this, and I was oh, no. um, oh, in no. high school in my senior year of high school. I took part in a journalism program uh, called News Studies where we went to the local, um, the NBC affiliate, and we took this the journalism class. And we had to, like, write and report our own story, you know. And it was really, it was a really cool thing that I got to do. But at one point early on, you know, the, the instructor who was this, I can't remember her name now, but she was, she was a radio reporter. She was really cool. Somebody, at, you know, we were talking and, and you know, she was just taking kind of general questions. I feel like it was early on in the class. And somebody asked, like, is it true about that guy and the gerbil? I can't, to this day, like, the balls on that kid to ask that question. <laughs> oh, my God. And she knew about it, too. She was like, look, no, that didn't, no one did this. No one, th- this guy didn't do it. Richard Gere didn't do it. No one has done this. <laughs> and so this, this, the guy left um, eventually left at, at the NBC affiliate. And when I moved out to LA in the mid nineties, I think around 2000, something like that, he ended up on like E or something. And I was like, Oh my God, that's the guy from my local news. They had oh, that. Wow. that rumor was it Ryan Seacrest? <laughs> <laughs> it was not Ryan Seacrest. Not Ryan Seacrest. Cause I don't think this guy's with, I don't know where this guy is now. He might still work for you. I don't know. But Somebody out here who I who was not from Philadelphia attributed that rumor to him out here. Oh I was my like, God. I can't believe this fucking wow. followed him. That's oh, shit. it was wild. It was wild. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's as far as I know, it's not true. But you know what? Maybe mm-hmm. that's kind of got, that's you like, know, there's oh. some truth to everything. That's what Justin Timberlake says. <laughs> it is it. He says, Is that a, is that a what does mm-hmm. he say? There's truth huh? to every joke. That's what Tim, that's what Timberlake says. <laughs> oh. That's real deep, JT. Just like Jennifer that's... Aniston says, if you don't eat if you don't eat protein right after you work out, then you might as well have not even worked out. Oh, interesting. This, these are just little things I take with me throughout my <laughs> life. I pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well. What else is going on, guys? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? How's. I think that's all. Oh, Slender Man. Oh, good old Slender Man. Slender Do we have time for Slender Man? Yeah, I, I feel mean, like Slender Man. We all know Slender Man. Did and done. Sad story. Kids need to stay off the internet. All right, well. I think, I think that's it. That's all we have. Yeah, yeah, dudes? That's all we got for today. Yeah, well. Paul, thank you so much for coming on. We're yeah. so appreciative. Thank you for having me. This was a ball. I had I had such a good time. <laughs> good. It's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so was that the wrong thing to say? No, it was no, good. That was- it was just earnest. <laughs> There's and you're it was 
No one's ever said it. That's ex- something so nice to me ever in my life. <laughs> 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 I'm not a We'll save you. We'll save you from having to hear our outro. But have a have a good rest of the day. And thank you. It was so nice to finally meet you. Wait, why can't I hear the outro? You don't want to hear it, Paul. What? <laughs> <laughs> Fair yes. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> this really was a ball. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Bye, Bye Paul. Right. Bye, Paul. Bye. There he goes. There he goes. Awesome. What a what a fun guy. He's not a mushroom. No. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Love Do you want to hear one. Craig's Ascension Woman story? <gasps> yes. 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 Let's get Craig on. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are Good. you? Good. Everyone looks great today. Thanks. Thank you. Tell us your story. Yeah, let's hear it. Well, that's a little tight. Everyone knows the resurrection, Mary, because it's you. You guys know that story. It's been told. It's like it's kind of like a lore at this point. Resurrection Cemetery in Chicago. There was always reports of a woman walking around inside the cemetery, like late at night. People would call us. You've heard this, right, Melissa? I've I've heard I've heard yeah. Cemetery woman. Yeah, there's like a million variations. And then the, the dudes driving by the cemetery, they, they pick up a hitchhiking woman. She gives a dress where to go to. Guy goes to the house. Right when he pulls up in front of the house, the woman vaporizes. He goes to the door, <laughs> knocks on the door. The woman's mother answers the door and says, that was my daughter. She died 10 years ago. Whoa. Holy shit. You guys haven't heard any variation of this? this is I've heard some variation of that. I have heard a variation. Well, the, yeah, it all stems from um, Resurrection Cemetery. Uh, you know, uh, there's a crazy... If, if we could jump to my hometown of Chicago here. Yeah. Let's jump. Okay, well, it earned the reputation, and I don't know if I coined the reputation name. Wow. But it's the the Triangle of Death. Oh, fuck. Oh. Chicago to, Mo- Ch- Chicago to Milwaukee to Rockford has had more serial killers, mass murderers, and mass, mass deaths than anywhere else. Are you True. serious? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, there's... Uh, you guys know the story of Richard Speck, serial killer? Well, mass murderer? Yeah. Yeah. You know that one, really, Richard Speck. I don't. He went in... Some people don't anymore. He went into a, a, a nurse's dormitory, trapped women in one room, and then brought them to the next room and raped them and murdered them one at a time. And yeah, that's a he, crazy he, story. Yeah, he, he killed seven seven women, I think. Anyway, and then mm-hmm. in the late 70s, it was obviously John Wayne Gacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, Dahmer, obviously. Um, another thing, though, you know the story of the Great Chicago Fire? Yes. Whole city burned down. The only building that didn't burn down was the water tower in Chicago. It's oh. like this old Gothic looking thing. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the deal. The water tower is on the north, considered like the Gold Coast, the, 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 the wealthier part of Chicago. Mm-hmm. That is on property that was owned by one of the founders of the Church of Satan in America. Not only that, hold on a second. On that same property is where Hugh Hefner started the Playboy, Playboy uh, 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 empire. Oh, stop. So that you go, you can say, okay, well, that's you know, that could be fall under the whole Satan thing, right? You you know, it was like the rise oh, of pornography. Weird. Not only that, uh oh, that's also where the John Hancock Building is. The John Hancock Building right. is probably like the third or fourth tallest building in Chicago at this point. Um, it's the building where Chris Farley was found dead in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the building where, um, you know, the little girl from Poltergeist. <gasps> yeah. She was filming Poltergeist 2 and it took place in that building and she died of like some weird, uh, like colon disease. She was like 10 years old or something. Right. And Uh-oh. I'm sorry if I'm sorry if I'm railroading you guys. No. no. More people were killed building the John Hancock Center than any other building in America. Oh, I've heard that. Holy shit. Lastly, <laughs> every couple years, like a pane of glass falls from the building and slices somebody in half who's walking by on the street. Wait, like Final Destination what? style? Sorry. Yeah, a woman just, if you look look up, like uh, if you Google like 
John Hancock glass death. There was like a woman, I think like maybe five years ago, just walking by. Oh my and, God. I mean, that's happened a few times, like way more than it should, right? Wow. That building's cursed. That's all on that, that lot of land where the, the, the water tower is that didn't burn down the Chicago fire. Church of Satan, Playboy, that building, like it's, it's this crazy and just about maybe 15 minutes from there is where John Wayne Gacy did all, you know, not that that's related, but. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Holy that's not really, shit. A, that's not really an urban legend. Oh, well, it kind no, of but is. I mean, it's good. Two other mass deaths though, that no one talks about the Iroquois theater fire. Do you know about this? There was a play going on. It was packed to the gills and the doors were locked and a fire broke out. It was like 430 people died. Like it was one of the biggest mass deaths in American history. Nobody talks. It might even be more than that. Wow. And the stories are horrific. Then there's another story about this boat that was, it was like a decommissioned military boat. They were holding parties on it docked on the Chicago River. I think it was like in like 19, maybe 15 or something. It was, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's a dance party, or whatever. Everybody goes on the boat. All these people were on the boat. It was something like 700 people and the boat capsized in the river while docked. It just tipped over and nobody could get out. Oh, my God. Oh. That's the second largest to the Titanic um, when it comes to people dying in a boat. No one knows about this. Also crazy. About about four years ago, somebody yes, can go off. <laughs> so four years ago, somebody's going through the Chicago uh, uh, archives in the library. They find like twenty minutes of film footage of <gasps> that boat tipped over, and like people are just on top. Like, what do we do? Like, they couldn't get anyone out. Like, everyone was just oh drowning. God. Imagine drowning while you're docked. Like oh, they, God. they just couldn't get out. It, it's the most horrifying That's crazy. thing. Now, another crazy thing about that too. Um, George Hallis. Do you know who George Hallis is? No. no. All right. Well, he founded the NFL National Football League um, okay, and the yeah. Chicago Bears. He was, I believe, like 20 at the time. And he was supposed to be at that party. And he was like five minutes late. <gasps> and he arrived and it had already flipped. Thank God. So... Holy would football wow. have even happened if he wow. had been five? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's not really my uh, my uh, legend, though. No, these are all great. Those are all good. All right. Well, the urban legend. This, this is the one. This is the only ex paranormal experience I've had that I cannot explain. Oh. It's a cemetery called White Cemetery in Barrington, Illinois, which is a very wealthy suburb. Uh, I think the Walgreens fortune is there. Brock's candy like it's it's like old old Chicago money mm -hmm. you know so anyway the cemetery white cemetery is established in 1820 it's you you drive into Barrington and they're they're like beautiful like horse property houses like big houses mm -hmm. but with you know 50 acres 100 acre uh, lots and you're driving the road's called Cuba Road you could look this up you drive and you're just amongst all these like just you know fields and then there's this little tiny cemetery and there's been reports for at least 50, 60 years of like, you know, white orbs, whatever. So it's kind of the place to go when, you know, I grew up in the area, not in the Barrington mm -hmm. area, but about a half an hour away. Anyway, my friends and I go one night, uh, you know, it's like, hey, man, let's go to white, you know, that kind of thing. It was in high school. So we drive out there and I'm in the backseat with my friend Chris and we pull, we pull into the cemetery like, you know, they have, they have gates that they still open and close. Uh, the gates closed. We pull in there and I look to the left and behind all these trees, there's like an old like 1800s house and every window is gro is glowing like orangish red. Swear to God, I'm oh both God. of my dead parents. Swear to God. Huh. I look over at it and I go, I go, holy shit. And I go, look. And we look back and it was gone. This has been in my uh -huh. mind yeah, hold on. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. We were probably drinking. You know, back then we drank and drove and crazy, stupid stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, me, I was just, I wanted to see something because, you know, this and all that. And then probably about, I don't know, like a year ago, it just pops into my head. I look it up online. There's three things people talk about. A black car, like an older car, pulls up in front of the cemetery and then will just disappear the white orbs floating over headstones in the cemetery huh. and a disappearing huh. house 
that allegedly was burned to the ground. Whoa. This happened to me in like 1988. And I, it's not something I had in my mind. The internet wasn't really around. You know, I didn't look it up. Yeah. And then I just bought this like Legends and Hauntings of Illinois book. And that's one of the things that other people have said. Whoa, Swear to God on my parents. That's crazy. Yeah. Look up the cemetery. I mean, it's really cool. There's also a, a, a there's a railroad oh track God. nearby. And, and in a lot of those rural areas, they don't have, you know, gates. You're just expected right. to pull up and look. And people will, pull, will, will hear a train, they'll pull up and they'll see a light and then it never comes, but they'll hear the train. And then once they look away and look back, the train, you know, the, the light from the train, it had never, it never comes. That's another one that's of the... That's crazy. Anyway, that's White Cemetery in Barrington, Illinois on Cuba Road. Established 1820. Wow. So, so we're at the 200 year anniversary this year. Uh-oh. Ooh. Yeah. We should go there and <laughs> oh. see if we see it. Oh, dude, I'll tell you what. Pick up a book about... Chicago hauntings and ghost story. I mean, just the fact Ooh. that the Iroquois th- th- theater fire had like 500 deaths. And then like within three years later, 700 people drowned about 900 feet from the theater. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Like, th- th- that's like 9-11 shit. You're like just right in that area. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I don't know, there's just a ton of, you know, and all the, uh, the, mo- the, the, the mobsters up there and this place is haunted because of the St. Valentine's Day massacre and all the, you know, all mm. the organized crime. And not to mention, another thing I forgot to mention, though, is H.H. H. Holmes, the devil in the oh. white city. Oh, yes. Yeah. Where he used the Chicago World's Fair in order to, you know, the hotel of horrors, right? You know that story? Yep. Yeah, yes. we were going to do an episode on him. Well, oh, you got to yeah. do, yeah. That, uh, yeah uh, I think yeah. they're doing that movie. The, uh, that was, I think Scorsese optioned that book. Oh, uh, really? The Devil in the White City. They portrayed him on American Horror Story, too, or a character oh, based on okay. him. I mean, how diabolical is that? Yeah, like setting crazy. up, like piping gas into rooms. This is in the 1800s, Insane. man. Like, yeah, it's like crazy. With, with like a little slot so he could watch the per like like collapsible floor like it's crazy. It's yeah, insane. crazy. Yeah. yeah, that whole story. Um. Anyway, is that enough? All right. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. As Thank usual, you. Greg. Thank you. As Craig. usual. <laughs> Just dropping in. All right. Bye, ladies. Bye. <laughs> Just a wealth of knowledge. What? He know he just a wealth of knowledge knows know. so many facts about everything. I know what a roller coaster, folks. <laughs> um, if you have urban legends, first of all, huge for the podcast that we got Mr. P. F. Tompkins on today. Huge, huge. Um, and if you guys have your own urban legends that you would like to send in. Melissa, where can people reach us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter and Instagram or Reddit or Facebook. Great. Well, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed what we laid out for you today. Um, I am Allison Jordan Siegel. I am Melissa Ann Stettin. And I'm Maria Jordan Stettin. Huh? See what I did? What? What? (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) An Erio's original. Powered by ACAST.